Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's nice to see you sitting in that chair, Mr. Chairman. It's, that looks, thank you. Yeah, yeah. looks good. Um, congratulations to all the nominees. Thank you for being here. Let me start with an issue that's very important to the state that I represent. In the Infrastructure Act that Congress passed a year or two ago, the bill amend, now law, amended the Federal Power Act Section 216, which allows now FERC to designate certain areas as national transmission corridors in the states under certain conditions. There's a three-part test, but, uh, but uh, uh, the three-part test is disjunctive. Uh, which means that uh, if FERC were to find that the state agency, regulatory agency, was not acting within a certain amount of time or pursuant to certain conditions, FERC could step in and say, okay, this is going to be a national transmission corridor. We will approve it. We will send it forward. Why does that matter to the state of Missouri? We have a transmission line called the Grain Belt Express. It's 800 miles. It connects, runs right across the middle of Missouri. It's meant to connect Kansas wind farms to consumers on the East Coast. To say that farmers in my state have been concerned about this would be a dramatic understatement. Dramatic. Not least because, as originally planned, this express transmission line contained zero power for the state of Missouri. And then the corporation that is in charge of it, which is now Invenergy, it's changed hands a few times, but now it's Invenergy, and their CEO was was before us not long ago, Invenergy has, has freely used the power of eminent domain to seize farmers' land. When, when farmers, you can appreciate, many of these farmers have been there for generations, and these are small farms. These are not corporate farms. This is their livelihood. And they said, no, actually, we don't, we don't want the transmission line to run through our farm. It's going to disrupt our, our farming. Many of them don't own very many acres. And Invenergy has said, oh, it's too bad. We're going to come in. We're going to take it. And by the way, you're going to get no power out of it. Now, they've since amended it. Missouri's going to get a little bit of power. But it's still going right across the middle of the state. Here's what I'd like to hear from each of you. We'll start with you, Ms. C, and, and come down the, down the line there. Will you be wary of using this power that you now have under Section 216 to essentially Bigfoot state authorities and state regulatory agencies to, to uh, sidestep them which, if FERC were to do that, would also sidestep all of the local citizens? You know, if, if FERC were to come in and to say, uh, we're going to designate this as a national transmission corridor. Farmers in Missouri would have no recourse. I mean, at least under the current law, they can go to the state agency and have they have done so. But if FERC is to get involved and just and and take over the process, their voices would be completely cut out of the deal. In this case, much to the benefit of a very large, very profitable corporation. So my question to you is, will you exercise extreme care and will you make sure that if, when you are considering such national transmission corridors, you are protecting the rights of local farmers and local ranchers and local citizens who can't afford to hire lobbyists, who don't own these corporations, who are not getting money out of the deal, but whose livelihoods are tied to the land? We'll start with you, Missy. Uh, yes, Senator, Section 216 is, is an important part of the law. It's no less a responsibility of FERC than any other part of the Federal Power Act. I would take the same care towards faithfully uh, adhering and applying that law based on the particular facts before me. Of course, I am aware that the Commission is in, in the midst of rulemaking on this issue, so I would not want to prejudge any particular issues that may come out of that. But when it comes to any um, issues that may come before me, if I were honored to be confirmed, I'd be looking very closely at the criteria that, that you and the other members of Congress have put into law and taking into account all of those critically important issues. These are areas that affect many people, many stakeholders, and I think it's critical in these matters, as in the others in the Commission's jurisdiction, to look at all of those incredibly closely and to apply the law that Congress has put in place. Okay. Okay, good. So you're not going to allow you're not going to allow the corporate interest to, to trump what local farmers and local ranchers need because what will happen is you and I both know what will happen is in these in these cases you'll have the people who stand to make lots of money on it in this case is corporation and energy and they'll be telling you how desperately important this is and what who you will not hear from are the multi generation farmers who live on the land so what what I want from you is a commitment to remember the people who are actually affected here I know the corporations will be well represented. I mean, they'll be very, they're probably in this room. But who won't be, unless you take it into account, are local farmers, local producers, local folks. What about you, Mr. Reiser? Thank you for the question, Senator, and yes, I, I commit. Good, that was easy. Ms. Chang. I have great respect for states uh, and local farmers or local peoples, uh, and I also commend that the current FERC has an Office of Public Participation, and I fully support to make sure that we have 
we hear the voices that traditionally have not been brought into these cases. So I will also commit to make sure that I look at this type of issue carefully. Great. Thank you. Very good. Um, my time's expired. I've, I've, I have a few more questions uh, for each of you. And Ms. Chang, I want to ask you in particular, I, I think in the past you've been an opponent of tariffs on solar panels made in China. I'm hoping your view on that has changed, especially in light of the slave labor we now know that China uses for so many of its, of its so-called energy projects. I'm thinking of the Uyghurs in particular. But I, I have other people are here who want to ask questions. So I will give you those for the record and look forward to your responses. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman.